Hi, this is David Maloney from Small Business Planned. Today I'm going to answer the question, what's the difference between image formats, or specifically, what is and what's the difference between a JPEG, a GIF, and a TIFF? Now to understand image formats, you first need to understand which image formats suit which medium. Here I show the three main mediums. We have online, so for instance the internet. We have print, so printed materials such as brochures, flyers, catalogues and business cards. And the third medium I've classed as merchandise, but this entails all physical items such as external signage and promotional materials that you can touch but aren't print based. The five image formats I'll be discussing today are JPEG, TIFF, GIF, PNG, and EPS. First of all, what's a JPEG? Now you've probably heard of a JPEG before, as it's the most common image format found online. It's capable of featuring millions of colours, upwards of 16 million I'm told, although I haven't counted each one individually. The file format compresses really well. This is perfect for online where page loading times are so important. The JPEG image format is such that when you save, you will get some minor colour and detail loss through the compression mechanism. This also isn't the best for displaying sharp edges or lines or also text you'll see that if you're trying to save an image that has sharp edges or text, there will be some fuzziness around these edges. Overall, a JPEG is perfect for displaying online pictures and in also some print applications. What's a TIFF? Well, like a JPEG, a TIFF is capable of featuring millions of colors. The great thing about a TIFF though is that its saving mechanism means you have no colour loss. The downside of course though is you achieve little compression so you end, you end up with a large file size which isn't well suited to the online environment. Another downside of the TIFF is that it's not compatible with all applications and all platforms so if you're looking to save an image as a TIFF and say upload it to a particular website, that website may not accept a TIFF file format. Overall, a TIFF is recommended for highly detailed images that you're looking to print. What is a GIF? Well, a GIF is another image format that's capable of featuring 256 colors. Yes, that's only 256 colors and these colors have been predetermined you cannot add to these colors and you cannot replace these colors it's these are the 256 colors that are laid down and you have to work with them because you've only got 256 colors this file format compresses really well which is great for the online environment one thing to be mindful of is that the gif image format only shows 256 colors. So if for instance you're looking to save your logo or another picture which has uh, which features some colors that are outside this 256 color range well the GIF file format won't show these colors accurately so you're better off using a JPEG. If however you're looking to feature an online diagram charts or text or some sort of basic image with sharp edges then a GIF is your best file format. What's a PNG? The PNG image format was actually designed to supersede the GIF image format. It's capable of featuring millions of colors and it compresses really well so it's much like a JPEG in that regard. However it's better than a JPEG in that it is great for displaying sharp edges, text, or even transparencies. That's something that a JPEG can't do. One of the downsides to a PNG 
is that it can only be used online. The main downside though is that it's not compatible with all applications and platforms. In particular, it's not compatible with Internet Explorer version 6 and lower. What this means is, if you've saved an image and uploaded it to your website, visitors that are browsing your website using Internet Explorer 6 or older won't be able to view your images. Now this is a major downside. And that's the main reason that I don't recommend you use the PNG format. But moving forward, I see PNG becoming the standard online, replacing both JPEG and GIF. So watch this space. And lastly, what's an EPS? Well, the great thing about an EPS is that it's scalable to any size. Take, for instance, your logo. You may have your logo saved in a JPEG format to say 10 centimeters in diameter. Now that means that your logo can really only be used in applications of 10 centimeters or smaller. If you're looking to apply it to an application of say 50 centimeters or a meter, you won't be able to stretch the JPEG without losing color or detail. With an EPS, you can scale your images to any size. Just say you want to put an image or your logo on a billboard, that's fine. If you have it as an EPS format, you can stretch it to 20 meters, no problems. Now because an EPS is a vector image format, it can only be opened by specialist graphic design software. This includes applications such as InDesign or Photoshop. You won't be able to open it in your more run-of-the-mill applications such as Microsoft Word or uh, Microsoft Publisher. Again, this format's also great because it doesn't lose color or detail. Overall, I recommend the use of an EPS in any printed materials that includes signage and also merchandise applications. Now here's a nice summary of when to use each image format. For online images, pictures and logos, I recommend you use the JPEG format. If you're looking to show an online diagram, charts or text, then you should use the GIF format. Going on to printed applications, your best bet for run-of-the-mill print jobs uh, is to use a JPEG, a TIFF or an EPS. For more high quality print copies, I suggest you use a TIFF or an EPS. And for larger print, print versions such as large posters or big signs, I suggest you use an EPS. And that's the difference between your image formats. For more tips, check me out on smallbusinessplanned.com.